I'm not I'm really confused. What exactly is your profile pic? To me, it looks like a gorilla. It's, uh, my profile picture is Roddy Tops from the popular video game series Shantae taking off her head and blowing a guy while resting her fat titties on top of uh, her head. Roddy Tops? Welcome to your internet friends and hey guys congratulations COVID finally did it it killed a boomer that we actually care about Trump is gonna die baby I for oh. one don't wish death upon anybody Ben's just a piece of shit Coward, cowardly answer yay such a coward this nightmare can't even wish death on his political opponents yay I'm I'm pretty uh well, let's be honest here. It's wishful thinking. He's not gonna no. really die. Oh, no, 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 he's gonna, no, he's gonna be president for life. They're just gonna put him in a like like uh, Walt Disney put him in a vat of uh, ice. You know, oh but, fuck you! Yeah, no, he, he has think... too much money. Has access to too many good doctors. He's gonna live, unfortunately. Are we doing in Minecraft, the queen? they're just gonna cry and freeze every time he's not in a public light. So Trump's gonna be Trump's gonna be cry or frozen now until he gets elected. I mean, <laughs> if he gets they're elected, put him in the fucking freezer. Yeah, yeah, it's put in the freezer. Like Squidward in one episode of uh, SpongeBob. Because since he likes Coca Cola, yeah. so be, make sure you got like a crate of Coca Cola with him, he'd be happy. Yeah. Oh, well, what are you going right, to do? But so... until the fateful day that Trump dies, we are going to be talking all about the recent presidential debate and what a fucking shit show it was. It was, was awful. Absolutely terrible. horrible. So keep our fingers crossed for the death of Trump, our loyal or, your friends, audience. Or. Or a Joe Rogan moderated debate. Or More on that Joe Rogan. Yeah. And let's get into this shit. Mining away. I don't know what to mine or mine this anyway. In this Minecraft day, so beautiful and further down. Okay, right. so this I came across. I heard about this earlier. Uh, <laughs> why are there two banaticals in the bottom of the screen? It's fine. Uh, look in like stream stream yard. Just look at the bottom. There's two binoculars. Um, so no, that's the screen that I'm sharing, you idiot. Right, fuck you then. All right. So now, like, what ended up happening is uh, this was so much of a clusterfuck. So many people hated it that they are realistically thinking about changing rules. One of the rules that they're thinking about implementing is giving the moderator the ability to cut their mics when they won't shut the fuck up, which that could have been useful. Very yeah, useful. Yeah, that would have been very useful for a certain presidential. For both. I mean, to be, I mean, like, let's be honest. Biden here. did Biden not did nearly interrupt as much as Trump. Let's I know, but I know, but he did interrupt. So let's be try to be unbiased he, here. I'm, I'm being very unbiased. It was occasional and he usually shut himself up. I know what I'm saying, though. Yeah, but, but yeah. Trump will walk off if uh, if a moderator keeps doing that. But the Trump will just walk off. He just you'll yeah. probably say, "Oh, he, like put my mic back on. I'm walking off." He'll say that. Yeah, away. no. And then Trump will look like even more of a child than he already looked like in the debate, fucking interrupting people like crazy. But yeah, no, I that debate would have been so much better if the moderator could have actually like cut someone's mic during their two minutes because Chris Wallace I'll, was a fuck. I. Don't I mean Chris Wallace? I think was just trying to. It seems like a fairly he decent was moderator. To do his job, but yeah, he just got he, overran. Well, yeah, because he was dealing with Trump, and Trump is not a civil person. He he's a fucking he's a he's a bloviating he's asshole that has to interrupt with everything. Yeah, and that was the biggest problem here. I think that we've seen the biggest demonstration of the problems that exist with civility politics in this uh, fucking debate. Because if your if your opponent isn't going to be willing to act like a civil person then you have to fucking abandon civility and fucking start telling that guy, hey, shut the fuck up, you interrupting piece of shit. Stop acting like a selfish child who can't argue about, uh, in any other way than just taking over the fucking speaking space. I just really dislike the precedent that Trump is setting here, though, because he's like, he's like, he is setting new grounds for being a fucking worthless president who can't act civilly at all in politics. He's literally bringing us to the point where it's like, yeah, no, we, we can't even trust the presidential uh, nominees to have a conversation between them without them yelling over each other like a bunch of bickering children. Ben, Ben, you don't know anything, Ben. Shut up. I don't know anything. Ben? You don't. 
Ben, he doesn't know anything. Listen, he thinks he knows me. He doesn't understand. I don't need to interrupt anyone. I will interrupt them if they're wrong, but I don't need to interrupt anyone. And the funny thing I've is, never, like, they, they call me the least interrupting person they've ever met. And, like, going back on your point, I mean, I don't know if Trump said that, but he, he, probably, he probably could have. But even if that is true, like, they give you two minutes to respond to all their lies. Mm-hmm. Knowing Trump, he could have taken well, probably respond in thirty seconds, then ran off a million miles an hour for the next minute and a half. Yeah, but uh, my, probably the best part of that line, uh, well, the best part for Biden at least, was the suburbs part, where mm-hmm. essentially Trump's talking about like, oh, well, the suburbs are fucking suffering, you know, and he made it very not subtle, you know, basically saying. The brown people are going to move in the suburbs. And Biden's like, listen, man, the suburbs have been integrated for a while now. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, yeah. this isn't 1950. Your racist ass shit won't won't land here. Yeah. And he I, has a point. I, I, yeah, I was surprised by how many times Biden actually did have a decent thing to say against him like when he was Maybe. talking about how like when he was talking about how the fbi has said that antifa is not a group it's Which an idea not, technically. yeah exactly they're an idea they're a movement and if you call them a terrorist group like i really wish he had hammered home that if trump calls antifa a terrorist group then he's going to be silencing uh, tons of americans under the false auspices of uh being uh, associated with anti-government terrorism which uh know. is it's similar to a certain filipino co- country that we won't bring up yeah um, well i mean you just said the fucking country Country. Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, like but yeah, the Klan. No. The Klan is a the Klan is the domestic terrorist group. They're not really around anymore, but they were a domestic terrorist. Group. Well, you have the Proud Boys. Those are a current day uh, domestic terrorist group. Yeah, just, just but... bring a term of vote trial and the rest name was shit Antifa. That's that's what you got to do. Got to win term of vote trial. It, it worked well in the UK, I think. Did it? I don't but, sure. uh, Taffy, you forget yeah, that the difference between the UK and the US is one is better. Well, not just that. Uh, one's more civil. Yeah. At least to your right. face. At least to your face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I like, Taffy, we were talking about good old John Majors, not John Major, not too uh, long ago. Yeah, That's yeah. a perfect example. I mean, no, he's a nice man. He only backstabbed her twice, three times. <laughs> I know. But yeah, no, I. I think that as much as Biden did have like a couple decent jabs in there, he was still as weak as he always has been. Oh, yeah, nobody won that. Nobody. No, won nobody won, won that. I would say, I would say that there were only losers, and yeah. Trump was the bigger loser for making himself look so unhinged and unable to engage in anything civilly. Um, you hit the by arguing the with the moderator like every single part of the I was, fucking debate. I was about to say you hit it right on the head. Uh, mm-hmm. If you made me pick a winner. It would be Biden just because he came off better at the end. Yeah. Like, like Trump's trying what he tried in 2016. Mm-hmm. And it's not working this time around. The world's no, a completely I, different world. Like, no, I had a pandemic. I read, I can't remember where, but I read a good article. So it's not, origi- this is not my original idea. But the argument is Trump won because he's, he's based. He he's exposing Biden as a as a corporatist. Remember, he kept telling me you're a socialist, and he keeps saying I kicked out the socialist. So I say Trump. I won. am the party. I think that Trump I, did a lot of attempts to try and paint Biden as like this far left sympathetic type of guy to like tr- to continue this this even tira- even this tirade though, that he seems to have been going on, which is it, with trying to like create this huge antagonism between the right and the left, with calling all the peaceful protesters anarchists and rioters and looters and stuff. Uh, like no, that. No, but, but I don't well, think he succeeded. I think that even though Biden was pretty weak in his responses, I think he was pretty easily able to show that like no, I'm I'm a pretty no. toast liberal. That's I'm not. I'm saying that's what's, uh, that's what. That's what. Trump you know, is corporatist also. Like what's no, 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 let, no, let's I'm, not split ears here, you know. No, but the tactic basically, basically said if you want to give Trump the credit, the tactic is he's there's a lot of disenfranchised uh, Bernie supporters and yeah. actually, mm-hmm. social democrats, socialists, whatever you call them, actually people who want uh, progressive. So, the, so the is the CNN, I think, and you can't trust CNN, but probably was CNN. Uh, but he, or in, but or in MSNBC, so it's one of one definitely. of the fucking milk toast left liberal. But they said was Trump's tactic is he wants. But you remember, there was a lot of Bernie supporters didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. He wants the same thing. So his so plan right. is engage, uh, fuse, uh, energize his his core base for him to turn out, but then show Bernie and uh, no, sorry, show Biden mm-hmm. as a real milk toast centrist corporate hack. And then he's basically saying, well, why are you voting for? 
So yeah, the I, thing is, I, I totally get where, like, I did see Trump I, try a little yeah, like, bit I to sort of go to, to him, sort of go for, around. like, yeah. I, I saw him sort of trying to stroke the flames of the Bernie or bust mentality, at least yeah, like early on into the debate. The but the, yeah, definitely. He was saying, like, oh, look, you you lost by so little, Bernie. Bernie, which is, uh, funny, actually, almost straight, which is true. Med Medicare for all mm -hmm. is popular in this country. I think it's like 62 yeah. percent of people, last time I checked, are in favor of it. Yeah, so no, no, no. It's not, it's not far Biden left here. in the slightest. No. But but moving on from that, I definitely did see him try to stroke those flames. The problem was, I think, two things. One, he made it way too obvious that that was what he was trying to do to the point where it was just so obvious that he was trying to sow discord. Like, nobody would fall for it. Nobody would be like, yeah, Trump's talking about the true things. It's like, no, he's just clearly trying to uh, oh. make Biden look like a fucking socialist leftist. And that's my second thing. He, was, he wasn't he was focused enough on getting the Bernie uh, supporters to hate Biden. He was too focused on making the Trump supporters hate Biden as a socialist and no one's going to believe that that was the problem he, no, I don't biden's, think he attempted been in, it biden's been in dc for 47 years he stopped he started off working with segregationists such as strom thurman i mean there's an attack line you can use right there the man literally sat down and spoke with segregationists you know he wrote the crime bill there are there are ways to attack biden politically and it's mainly on his record, but mm -hmm. Trump's too stupid to do that. Trump, Trump did do that a few times. He tried, or, he tried, but he would always get into the problem of like not substantiating his claims with any sources, and then he would get into like saying like, uh, "Unlike me, unlike me, I never he did that." I never did with his own feet is what he yeah. did. It, his problem is that Trump can't make good arguments because he's always focused around bolstering his ego. That's the only thing that he cares about in an argument. So I he mean, can't well, really like make valid that. points because they're all around showing that he's a he's a loser. Unlike me, I'm the greatest. He can't he can't come. I up mean, with well, a good look argument. at 2016 though. He had things to hit Hillary on, and he mm -hmm. hits her on them. That's why I said like he's if he was doing what he if he was trying attempting to do what he was doing in 2016 at least more. Mm -hmm. He probably would have, I'm not going to say one because he still acted like a fucking child, but, you know, maybe he could have done what Taffy was talking about, exposed yeah. him more as a cop. Corporatist, which I think, I think know the main reason is that it was too easy to hate on Hillary because her problems were just obvious. The email, oh, yeah. the history, yeah. that type of stuff. It was oh, easy God. to hammer home. But the hatred that the, the Bernie supporters and the leftists I mean, well, Obama, in the Democratic Party have for Biden, it's more vague. It's too difficult for Trump to grasp I mean, and put in a thing, couple of short terms. You're also missing things. something else here, Ben. Mm -hmm. uh, Hillary was hated. She, you know, she had a low, um, she had a very low favorability rating. But Biden is bouncing off of Obama, who is now in the sixty percent approval rating after he yeah. left office. And by the way, I'm checking real clear politics now. Last time I checked was before the debate, mm -hmm. and Biden was leading by six point six at that time. Now he's leading by seven point four. Yeah. So, if anything, this has given Biden a bump in the polls. I was, was, was going to yeah. say, uh, when he, mm -hmm. and I think people don't hate Biden as much as Hillary Clinton, because Hillary Clinton is from the Clinton dynasty, whereas Biden's more of a milk toast. You know? like yeah. he's, part, he's part of the problem, whereas he's just... He's just he's not he's not, not exceptional enough. He's too status yeah. quo. There's nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. to hit him on, well, especially. Yeah. Not aside, Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton was... Uh, trying to think, no, she was the cause. She She's a cause, whereas... Uh, Biden is. I'm trying to think of correct terminology, but uh, Hillary Clinton was a giant fucking what? Whereas mm -hmm. that's Hillary Clinton because of corporatism and corruption and all that shit. Whereas Biden yeah. just Biden's more like a my rash. You just ignore or just live with. Yeah. If that makes sense. He's, Hillary he's, Hillary was like the emperor, and uh, yeah. Biden is more like one of the fucking lower grunts. Servants. I don't know. Uh, yeah, what was the name of the guy that got choked to death by Darth Vader? That guy. That's yeah. what Biden is. Yeah, Hillary Clinton is part of the Clinton dynasty, whereas yeah. Biden is just a wheelie dealer, you know, uh, you know, greasy little politician who has gone through. Mm -hmm. all, I mean, know, well, there are a couple through. dynasties in the U.S. politically. There's the Kennedys, yeah. who yeah. actually just lost their very first uh, political race, funnily enough. And you have the Clintons. Um, yeah. You know, the Reagans, the Reagans tried to make one, but they never really got past. Well, there was the Bushes for a while. Yeah, yeah, and you have the Bushes, but I think it goes back to also like Biden is bouncing off of Obama a lot. Mm -hmm. Obama's he's he's looked at very favorably, even though as far as presidents go, 
I mean, he did some good things, but overall, he probably got a C grade. You know, uh, I think that's fair. He definitely did make good on most of his promises. Yeah. The Iran deal was his best thing to do. Uh, Obama yeah. there was a step in the right direction. It wasn't fantastic by any chance, but. Creeper. Oh, man. So we back in the mine. Got our pickaxe swinging from side to side. Side, side to side. The Saska grew. Okay, so clearly, you know, Trump has COVID. Everyone knows that. But we're we're oh. gonna we're gonna get into that later. We're gonna get into that later. This is telling. Okay, the Cleveland, as you guys can see on the screen, Cleveland officials link eleven COVID nineteen cases to the pre debate planning and the setup. Here's the thing, though. Trump had that. He had COVID nineteen whenever he was debating Biden. Now I don't think he knew he had it, but he had to have at least felt sick beforehand. Which hmm. begs the question, I mean, should he have gone on? I mean, I get it. A lot of people overreact when it comes to this virus, but... Mm, that, he should but, not have come on. Yeah, exactly. Like but obvious. they're two 70-year-old men, all right? Yeah. They can die a lot easier than, let's say, if you had like a fucking... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, if me and you were on stage. Mm -hmm. right. but, but that's been the thing with Trump just to begin with, is that he just has not been treating this, this pandemic seriously. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes that's what makes this infection the ultimate irony is that he, this thing that he's been playing down, he's been promoting conspiracy theories, he's been giving false information about for so long, and, and been trying to re you know institute the economy despite the fact that we just recently had a surge in fucking cases again. He he has now been infected by it. He's dying by it. It's such it's like, so perfect. Uh, I'll tell you the best thing I heard, and it came from a friend of the show, Monty. Yeah, uh, Monty said whenever this first came, he said, "Fuck the economy." We built that shit. We can rebuild it. We cannot it's rebuild true. human lives. Yes, it's true. You cannot money, money, it can be remade. We can get industry back together. But if we don't have the people, if we yeah, lose your fault, there's regardless. gonna be no economy to build. Exactly. And it's it's yeah. garbage. So Ben, uh just skim through this because this is a really interesting article, honestly. This just shows like how careless they all were. And it's not just on Trump's side either. I don't want people to feel like we're dogpiling on Trump. There were definitely some people on Biden's side. Now, luckily, Biden has uh, tested negative for, for the virus, when I've heard, um, because he immediately went and got tested. And I've mm -hmm. heard some people, like, I've heard the conspiracy theories, oh, the deep state put uh, injected him with the virus. Uh, I've also heard people, you know, on the left, or not on the left, but some people who are voting for Biden say in, Oh, he was trying to kill Biden with the virus. Uh, unlikely. He's not that clever. I know, but still, like, so before people get my point to say that is before you go on a whole conspiracy rampage, just know that, you know, Trump's neither, an idiot. Neither side's bright, really, no. whenever it comes to this. And I don't think, yeah. and as Ben stated, I don't think Trump would have the wherewithal to do this. And I've also heard people saying, oh, he's faking it. First off, mm. you no. Know, not second off if he was and he and people were to find out do you know how much that would kill his campaign trump would never doesn't benefit from this he exactly. makes himself look so yeah. weak there's nothing to gain from faking the situation yeah exactly and kyle kowinski put this perfectly he said sickness to trump is like weakness yeah he exactly taffy you got anything to add on this I much agree. I don't, I don't. There's one three which I actually my mum took me as because we had a couple of beers over, over food. And so do you think maybe Biden gave, maybe Biden coughed on Trump or something? I thought he could have done that. That'd be quite clever. That's the only other take I got is from my dear old mother having a couple of beers. I mean, well, Biden did dear old conspiracy that. theorist mother. No, it's yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. Unlikely. I mean, well, even if he did, Biden did test negative. So. Yeah. Not to mention, I mean, COVID just doesn't spread that quick. That quick. No, no, it doesn't. No, it would. It, but Trump already had COVID at the debates. It's so oh. near guarantee. See, we are Lizard Squad. As gay as Teletubbies, we have no buddies, and our only friends are the moms we have who let us stay in the basement getting fat. What you think of that? Killing all your connections with a DDoS pack. We can hack. We're thicker than the plastic on a hot chick's rack. Yeah. So Ben, are we going to talk about? His res his response, Tap. You can jump in on this too. To uh, them asking him, "Are you going to basically tell white supremacists to fuck stand off? Stand back and stand by." 
but somebody's got to do something about these Antifa guys. I'm just saying. Somebody's got to be doing something about these that Antifa is, That's I'm a trigger. Heard, okay. I will, I will meet the Republicans halfway here. I don't believe that Trump intentionally meant to stay stand by and act as if he was, you know, working For with the that. proud. Yes. yes. Now, that being said, he is the slipperiest question dodger of the easiest question. That is the biggest example of someone who is fascist sympathetic you just trying say to that. avoid actively condemning white supremacists. Ben, Ben, will you condemn white supremacists? Well, I think that first, before I we mean, condemn, be serious, we have to, we have to, to yeah, no. <laughs> yes, obviously. Fuck there you the go. Problem. There you go. The That's easiest all... thing in the world. But Trump can't do it because Daffy, he knows you? and he's dog whistling and he's people a, lose part of his base. He does. Yes, he part of his base is white supremacists and fascists. He can't because he actually tried to turn them. that over on Biden also a couple times. Yeah, when he brought up the whole Antifa thing, um, and we've all agreed, and even the FBI is on our side that Antifa is not a group; it's a movement; it's a mindset, mm-hmm. essentially. There's no, are, there's no there's no structured I mean yeah. well like there's no structural leader that's the thing yeah. Unlike the Proud Boys, which have a specific goal, which is white supremacy and stopping, you know, uh, beneficial revolution, um, the Antifa's goals are nebulously around the idea of stopping fascism, which doesn't yeah, inherently no, not to say that they're angels. It, it doesn't. It doesn't angels. inherently mean that there's going to be destruction of property or people being harmed. In fact, a lot of times Antifa is stopping the right wing from engaging in those things, like abusing people after However, Trump and the right and stuff like that. And, and but I that's not to say that they're perfect. To. Obviously. Yeah, some exactly. people can wave the flag and, and, uh, oh, and you know start engage in some destruction of property and stuff like that. But that's not the that's not the mission of Antifa. That's just some people doing that. Unlike with the Proud Boys, where their that's explicit that's mission that's is that's white that's supremacy. That's well, I was gonna say, uh, no, I was gonna say the best way to describe Antifa is if you go into it. Uh, let's say oh, we're gonna definitely get demonized, but uh, let's, say Israel, let's say let's uh, say Israel carpet bombed the hospital. Every European branch of Antifa, I think America, I think Americans are divided. But for every, as far as I'm aware, every European, me and Ben aren't. Y- European Antifa uh, Twitter or you know spokesman condemns it. Germany mm-hmm. say say silent. Germany silent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so that's, that's what I'm saying. And so, 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 even on the European level, so every single group goes and is fighting. Is fighting. I know few people are so I mean, Germany yeah. has a bit. Germany has something to be ashamed of when it comes to Jews. Uh, let's just but, say that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, even, it's a, even on a simple issue of, of Israel and Palestine and European Antifa, uh, more specifically, the German Antifa are split right down the middle uh, over mm-hmm. that kind of shit. And then Antifa even... is not a group. It's not an organized group. Not, a like, group. I'm saying, I'm... Okay, listen. I'll tell you what I was taught whenever I was first in college about the definition of crime groups, right? One, there has to be a structure. Two, there has to be a main leader. And then, you know, he gives his, he gives his fucking orders out to his lackeys, and they give their orders out to the, the, under, to the underlings. With Antifa, it's really just a bunch of people who are pissed off. And and Ben Ben, you hit it right on the head a little bit. Um, they're not they're not perfect. They've definitely some some people you know who claim to be Antifa have committed violence and yeah. have committed some um, some vandalism of property, destruction of property. So mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not saying I don't support them. I do not. Su- I feel like whenever you start getting violent, it ruins your message. Yeah, I think it's bad optics for the most part, unless your enemy has been violent beforehand, which, to be frank, does happen a lot with right wing people. I mean, a lot of right wing groups like to come in with guns and be aggressive and bolstering. So sometimes, you know, it is sort of like actually fun fun story time. Actually, Um, there was somebody in um, I was talking to one of my one of the guys I went to the academy with. He's down in the lower part of the state and they had a bunch. They almost had a standoff between some. uh, you know, fuck it. I'll just say this. I'll just say the city. It was in Charleston. Charleston mm. is one of the most blue state, blue cities in this state, and they had a bunch of rednecks and a bunch of Antifa members, both packing heat. Keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. And everybody was thinking, "Oh shit," because things are about to go down here. 
thankfully that did not happen, but that just shows you that even in a deep, in a deep red state like mine, these things are happening. Granted, not on the everyday level, but they're happening in the bigger cities. Yeah. Like, they're no. in San Diego, for fuck's sakes. I don't think that there's one red voter in San Diego. There are, but there are definitely not, like, the redneck level of, like, openly hating immigrants and black people and stuff like that. They're just like, yeah, no, I mean, I, mean, I think we need laxer gun laws, you know? I mean, well, if they, if they were anti-immigrant in San Diego, they'd probably get fucking shot. Yeah, but they... I, I, members I, just pop up. I'm pretty sure, like, like at least a fourth of our population is immigrant. From Mexico. Yeah, I mean, you're close to Tijuana. And if not, it's Asian. So, yeah, we're a very diverse area here in San Diego. Taffy, what, Taffy, what do you got to say on this matter? You need to all be red. Join in the red banner of labor. You just need to all come under the red banner. Vote red or be dead. Okay. Wrong okay. country. We sh- yeah, like we should probably specify that red, <laughs> blue, or switched right, when it right. comes to the UK. You know. Is blue you for fat? Well, I guess, yeah, the authoritarian blue. right is blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue, blue, blue is conservative, so. Yeah, yeah. so well, red, he says red is still. conservative in our. Yeah, I know. I know. Right. Knows that too. Well, well, I know that, but, was, but wasn't it before, as I was reading, uh, not to digress, but I know red and blue happened because what I read and videos I watched was it was the TV stations where they just said, well, because if you look at the old sort of news coverage, black and white, and when it was came to color they were arguing like who should represent which party on the so the parties themselves didn't decide they just went along with it which i guess is kind of ironic since red is heavily associated with left-wing politics in yep. europe look at, the so- oh, look at the soviets yeah, yeah. So, so and all blue is associated with well the over europe's blue is conservative uh yellow is uh a liberal yeah. National, no. libertarian, yeah. liberal so liberal centrist like macron macron's party is centrist on neoliberal parties yellow oh centrist liberal democrats yellow blue conservative mm. uh, Re- republican party in france is conservative center left center right sorry and then i said red is associated with far, so, far so what was the origin of the uh, uh what i read that i read is parry comes so when in, when black and sorry, when color TV came in, different news stations had different colors represent uh, different parties during elections, and then mm-hmm. people complain and say I'm confused because I turn to and I say CPN and it's blue for the uh, Republican Party. So then all the news stations agreed, but they use the same uniform color, and then the parties just over time picked it up. If that makes sense, it was actually the news oh, station. Yeah, so the media, the media basically helped push a narrative. In other words, yeah, but no, wow. well, it wasn't it no, but accidentally, accidentally. Yeah, so then, yeah. Well, well, they, they, people get confused because you know one minute they turn over to CBN, and they, and then they think, oh, and I thought the fucking Republicans are winning. They switch over to the next channel, and it's different. Wasn't well, blue and red, but they end up the media station agreeing to stop people getting confused because if they flip flipping channels, checking different updates, or they cutting it so they don't get confused. So red and blue was decided. Uh, by the main uh, news news media channels, and then the well, parties that's, that's, picked it that's up. Very interesting, to have yeah, and, Thank and, you and, then a, and, a, and the parties picked it up. And that's why, as I said, it's really strange in European politics. Is uh, red is always social democrat, socialist over here. So it just, ha- it just happened when they decided red's uh, Republican. But it makes sense because they obviously wanted to do red, bright, and blue. So they obviously, mm-hmm. the colors. Well, where's the white at? That's the real it's the independence. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. So it was red, white, and blue. That's what that's where they came from. Red, red, white, and blue. Blue for uh, us today. So we have to have red, white, and blue to be patriotic and all that shit. Brown bricks. <laughs> Now, now, mm-hmm. I actually promised this last uh, earlier. Yes, Ben, uh, do you mind pulling up the uh, COVID, the Trump COVID article? I actually wouldn't and, mind. That would like really ruin my day and, if I had to do that. Well, fuck you, know. you. Well, <laughs> fuck you. Pull it up in this bitch. <laughs> and Taffy, I know that so you you actually brought this to my attention, so I went and searched for this article. Uh, do you want to tell us how you found out about this article? Oh yeah. Um, well, I saw on the BBC where uh, one minute they basically the doctor outside the medical centre is going, everything is fine, and White House officials going, shit, 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 shit. 
So BBC saying there's been a bit of mixed messages from White House. Like, there's been mixed messages from the President's team. So yeah, I think um, at the moment, everything, I think with 24 News, you know, any rumour, any whisper becomes headline. So at the moment, it's a bit of a clusterfuck. Yeah, I, may, I may well bend it, bend if you scroll up to the title, please. Um, yes. This this generally is true. Uh, highlight that for me. This is true whether it's a, a homicide, a crime, or if somebody's in the hospital. Usually 48 hours is when it's the most critical time, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, for, for instance, with a homicide, usually if you don't cap your suspect or you don't have a lead within 48 hours, you're fucked. It's not necessarily like this either, but the 48 hours are the most critical time period of anything, really, when it comes to investigations or, you know, hospital stays like this. Now, I've heard that he had a high fever, but I've heard, I've heard he's fine, essentially. He's going to be all right. Uh, you know, take that for what you will. Well, let's see what the article has to say. Uh, do you want to, like, go full screen on this or no? Because it's I don't streaming think already. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get, let's get full. I got you. I got you. Thing. Okay. I got you. Alrighty. Can you zoom in so we can... The president's vitals over the last 24 hours were very concerning, and the next 48 hours will be critical in terms of his care. We are still not on a clear path to full recovery, the source told White House pool reporters after briefing from his doctors. Alrighty then. So basically... However, according to the president's physician, Navy Commodore Dr. Sean Conley, offered an upbeat assessment of the president's condition, stating that he was feeling well, that he had been fever-free for 24 hours, and that his system's symptoms, which included an extremely mild cough, nasal congestion, and fatigue, are resolving and improving. Conley was evasive about when and if Trump had received supplemental oxygen, saying he is not on oxygen. Now, listen, what I've heard is... Uh, I've Okay, I heard from Kyle Kalinske again. Once again, that they were thinking about putting Trump on an experimental treatment plan. And from what it sounds like to me, I mean, you heard it right there, the naval, um, the fucking Commodore, sounds like he doesn't want to get too much into it. If he does know something, he's not going to get much too much into it, which leads me to believe that Trump's worse off than just a simple fever and a cough, you know? Yeah. However, I don't think he's at death's door. I wouldn't go that far because we did this with the Kim Jong Un shit about a month ago, right? Or, or a couple months ago, yeah. So, so the media has a tendency of blowing this shit out of proportion. He's sick. Don't get me wrong. He's definitely sick, and I think that Barron should probably also get tested. I don't know if they if he has or not. Uh, so like I said, he is sick, but. I'm leaning towards the first. I'm, well, I'm not leaning towards either one of them. Like I said I'm leaning towards that he's sicker than he's leading on, but he's not deathly ill. At any, uh, so far, at least. Yeah, yeah. So far, Taffy. We can only kind of opinion. As I said, uh, we use his put the right problem. He's saying there's so many. Uh, yeah, any whisper, sending mixed messages. Yeah, any whisper. Any fucking fart coming out of that fucking ward is going to be picked. You know, it's going to be anything. It's, it's, yeah, you know, I don't like to use the term because it, it strokes your fucking young ego, but he is quote unquote the, the leader of the free world. So obviously, nice. all, all, all eyes and cameras, and I said any fart or any cough is being recorded and monitored. Funnily enough, as you say that, I just got a local newspaper on my phone. It says the GOP fears the worst for Trump is yet to come. Hmm. It says Republican it's officials great. tell us not to worry about the number of infected people around President Trump that will rise, and they fear that enough senators could be sidelined to delay the Supreme Court. Yeah, told you, told, told you, told yeah. you. Yep. Told confirmation. You. BBC called it. BBC called it. Nice. Yeah. Now, funny called enough, it. Funny enough, this bitch that uh, I just have to go off on a rant on the new mm-hmm. Supreme Court. I see uh, she's in a cult, a religious cult. It's basically. Really? Yeah, I What's forget the name? the name of it. Let me find it. Telltale had a great video on this. Definitely sounded very suspect, at least in the way that Biden uh, described her leanings. I mean, let me find Telltale's video on this because he did a really good. Much okay, yeah, people of praise. She's in the religious cult called People of Praise. Oh no. Yeah. So if you look at what that is, it's basically a mixture of Catholicism and. Fucking uh, god damn it! I'm not thinking right now. Uh, Catholicism and fuck what? What's it? Protestantism ideas, ah. right? Yeah. So, 
And they have really gotten a lot of people. I mean, they've been around since the 50s. Well, they got Capocracy here for 1,700 members. Official, uh, but, but, but they have a lot of, like, associates. Yeah, so people are pretty... I think that this whole Supreme Court justice situation has really shown that the Republicans care way more about power grabbing than they do about maintaining yeah, any mean, sense like, of, like, democracy I mean, like, or American institutions. Because I forget which president it was under, but we did have this situation where, like, there was a Supreme Court uh, that, a appointee that needed to be made, and they didn't want to... Uh, the, the Republicans argued heavily that under the Democratic president that they didn't want to have um, a Supreme Court person put on until after the election, but now that, I mean, of course... Well, RBG, I mean, her last yeah. wish was for her seat not to be filled... So after yeah. the election, yeah. So no, that's sort of a dick move to deny a woman her last dying wish. Exactly. All right, uh, all right. Fuck it. But you've got a cultist, and I and I don't use the term lightly. A literal religious cultist. Look up. Uh, look up. Hold on, people of praise or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, yeah the people of praise. Look it up. If it she is, is appointed, this could be a huge threat to the sanctity of abortions within this country. Oh, like, oh, yes. yeah, they, they're totally going to try and overturn Roe the v. Roe v. Wade, um, and it will be disgusting. And I, yeah, just, I'm just very worried about I, it. It yeah. was founded in South Bend, Indiana in 1971. Um, and a lot of people are bringing this up. They're like, yo, this bitch is sort of crazy. Mm -hmm. But... Do they care? No. They just see that red R beside her name. And they're uh, like, well, you're right. Yeah. Well, well, I remember, was it Mackenzie King, the Canadian Prime Minister, thought his, he could talk to his dead, I thought his mother was talking through him, through his dead dog or some shit. So there has, yeah. that, that have yeah. been crazy. If you look up, actually, we should do a video episode then. <laughs> but he's got Mackenzie King, and he's the longest serving, I think, Democratic leader. I think 21 or 23 years he served as a Canadian Prime Minister. And I said, he... You so what will happen is I know we're having a we're digressing, mm -hmm. but his advisors will come in and then they'll give him advice and he says, I'm gonna talk to my mum. Okay, and he started talking to his dog. So it's like fucking son of ben, Sam. Ben, yeah, ben, yeah, you talk to his dog. The, uh, ben, if you check the, wow. the your Discord DMs, you'll see I linked their Wikipedia page. We can look at it together. Yeah, right, so he, he's considered the greatest Canadian prime minister because he's able to negotiate uh more powers to the Canadian Parliament. Obviously back then I think after World War Two, so he led uh, Canada through World War Two. After World War Two, Britain was broke, and he was able to negotiate uh, so independence, more independence from the British Crown. So, yeah, so let's go full screen on this. So. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Ben, if you can if you can zoom in a little bit here. Okay. Right. People of Praise. It claims to be a non-profit organization. It's a cult. As I stated, it was founded in 1971 in South Bend, Indiana. Funnily enough, that's where the Catholic University, the University of Notre Dame is at. Um, and they actually have some very prominent members in government, if you scroll down a little bit. They had an Indiana uh, state legislator, and they had a former bishop in the Catholic Church who's still been a member since 1983. Yeah, here's the history. You can go through it yourself. Um I would recommend Telltale's video on this because he does a fantastic job breaking it down if we just don't have that much time. We'll link it in the description. Yeah, yeah. And this time you better fucking do it, man. I'm tired of you not doing that shit. Yeah, no. This is this is just ridiculous that Trump is trying to put her in here. Um, it seems like it's, 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 one, it's further I'll proof that why. Republicans uh, don't care about why, the integrity man. of their and, uh, and I'll candidates. Tell you I'll tell you why. Yeah. Not, not only is it because she has an R beside her name, it's because mm -hmm. it's just that she's a she. He thinks if he plays uh, identity politics a little bit, he could get some brownie points with yeah, you know, some of those unregistered voters mm -hmm. that usually vote uh, blue. Yeah, I definitely think that is a big part of it. Uh, it just shows that Republicans really don't care about the quality of the people that they appoint. Oh, they just no. want people there that say that they're part of them. It could be a fucking crazy religious cultist for all they care. They don't give a shit as long as they get to get rid of abortions or whatever their fucking nebulous schemes are. The thing is that they've been on that train for so long. I don't think most of them know like what goes into an abortion now. No. The shit changes over the years. Yeah. But life is a light. Try life is sacred and it come, till it comes out of a vagina and then you should pull himself by your bootstrap. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's and then right. like. For uh, for the for the bottom ten percent of that uh, life's graduation graduating class, they get shipped off to the Middle East. 
Mm. We need more soldiers, damn it. Yeah, no, it really is just a yeah, shit and like, show, no matter here, what you look at. Here you can see that they have a couple of actually different schools. Uh, there's one in Virginia, one in South Bend, Indiana. Just go back up to the table of contents. They'll show you. I believe one in Washington State, if I'm not mistaken. It's at the Trinity School. He just went past it. It's Trinity yeah. School. Yeah, yeah, Trinity School. There's three locations. Hey. Here you go, Ben. So there's one in Virginia, one in Indiana, and is that last one? I can't read it. Like, what's the first one? River Ridge in Egan, Minnesota. Minnesota. There you go. So, if you notice something there, all three of those states, well, recently at least, have also been uh, sort of, sort of flip flop. You know, I think mm -hmm. Trump won Minnesota last election cycle, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Indiana is usually goes red, but it has. I mean, usually goes blue, but it has known to go red. And of course, Virginia. If a Democrat is able to win Virginia, they they put themselves in a fantastic place to win this. So, my point is, with these three schools in this in these states, granted, this cult may not be the biggest, but if those people who go to these schools are in a place like let's say Richmond, or Minneapolis, or fucking uh, what was this about? or like an Indian, or, yeah, or Minneapolis or Indianapolis. And they decide, oh, look, Trump appointed one of us. They will more than likely, if they were going to vote blue, they might turn their vote over to red. To gain experience points, yeah. And then it's try to get raw pork from pigs. Has no end, but it's still the best game. It's the eye of the spider. It's poison. If we do have another presidential debate and he does like he did last time, it might be time to hit the nail in the coffin. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. like from all the estimates I've seen, people are giving Biden an 85% chance to win, which if you looked in February seemed almost impossible. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know how much I can trust the polls considering what happened last time, but I mean, I'm just well, going to be I honest. I don't think Trump, and this is just like what I'm seeing, but I don't think that Trump has been able to maintain the same energy. I think he's starting to get oh, tired. He's getting older. He's, he's yeah. getting older. Yeah, he's four years older. I don't. I don't think he has an easy as easy of an opponent to destroy. I think he's starting to slip up and show how just incapable of decent rhetoric and argumentation he actually is. Yeah, I like, I feel like I, he's starting to die down. I laid out some attacks he could use. You know, he wrote the crime bill. Fucking work with segregation is Strom Thurmond more most uh, most prominently. Mm -hmm. What else is what else has Biden's dumbass done? Uh, oh yeah, Great he silver. support. Well, no, not not that we know of at least. Uh, he supported busing or like what was it called? Fucking hell. Um, anyways, he voted for the Iraq War. Um, yep. You know all these things you can hit him on. But instead, Trump goes for a personal attack like he did with his son. Which, yeah, that was dumb. Which, which, fair enough. I mean, you can make a point about that. But he just didn't do it. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, it's a very easy to point to me. Not to well, mention you can make the point against Trump a hundred times more. So, yeah, I mean, it's like, well, why is your son at it working on an energy board in Ukraine? Well, yeah, well, why is your son well, getting fucking your son emails from the from Russian the government? Arabia. From yeah. the Saudi Arabian government using your hotels. Yeah, no. But that's just, a wash. Uh, so, Trump is just so fucking inept. At, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, it's like, if he were to go, I mean, he's trying what he was trying in 2016. Mm -hmm. Partially, and like I said before, this is not the same world we live in as we did in 2016. A lot of shit's changed. Mainly a global pandemic that's killed what is it now over a million people worldwide yeah roughly it's it, we, i think uh, at least a couple hundred thousands have died so far yeah so you can't exactly try the same shit because it's not the same opponent no it's not the same world and people have had four years to look at you and look how mm -hmm. you govern a country and, and seen the utter failure especially during this health crisis yeah it's just this time Trump has too much working against him for him to 
hit back with his charismatic quote unquote personality. The, oh, yeah. the the issues are just too the issues are just too obvious. His actions are just too horrid. He and his petulant a- attitude is no longer able to like distract people from it. Yeah, I mean, well, he can try, but this the country's in such a fucking sad state here that mm-hmm. it's going to take a miracle. And by the way, I've and by the been those polls that I looked at took it. They gave Trump all of the votes he got last last year, like all the people that voted for him that were that were on the fence. And Biden still came up with over 300 electoral votes. Yeah. I Plus, I can't predict what's going to happen, but I mean, well, Trump's chances predict, don't look really but, good to yeah, me, but, at least. But maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part. Um, but hey, at the end of it, you know what? There's always still that niggling little chance he could still either die. Way so right. Either way, we're fucked. Either way, we're fucked. It's so true. Let's get let's get, let's All let's I'm get saying is... Today. If if the world if 2020 wants to end this year on a high note with something you know that's some fitting irony given all the horrible stuff that's happened in Minecraft, you should. I was hoping. I was hoping aliens, man. I was hoping that like on December 31st, 2020, fucking aliens come down just bitch slap. I'm okay with Trump dying in Minecraft from his own arrogance. No, no, no. No, think about it. He's going back as a zombie because on October 31st, all people die from COVID. They're going to turn to zombies. That's and right and zombies, he's gonna, I can see. Yeah, he's gonna, cool. that's, that's going to happen. And I live around the corner. I live like two streets away from a graveyard, so I'm fucked. All right. So thanks, everybody, for coming to watch today's episode. I know we didn't have any special guests or nothing, but I hope you liked us ranting about uh, Trump and how much of a fucking incompetent bastard he is and hoping that in Minecraft one day he may die. I mean, COVID. he's he's going to die in real life one day. Well, yeah, but I mean, one day soon. One day soon in Minecraft, he will die from COVID, and that will be pretty cool. One day we'll all die. Sorry to on, 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 on that note, we all die. Bye-bye. Yeah, we'll all all right, die. we're dead. All right, have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.